Hi folks, it's Austin here, and today we're going to be trying out a brand new, well, unreleased game. We're going to be getting a first look at it. This is Thief Simulator 2. Now, Playaway allowed me to use a beta version of the game, a playtesting version of the game, to show you guys what was up. And I have not touched this yet. I Presumably you guys haven't touched this yet, so we're going to be going through this for the very first time together. So let's see what they have here. I saw on the way in, they actually have a... they have a... A playway launcher now, so that's good for them. I'm glad they're doing well. So let's go and start a new game. Yes, I'm sure I want to start a new game. Although I could see the loading time certainly isn't optimized yet. But do keep in mind that this is just a demo of the game, it's just a beta version of the game, so. It's likely that optimizing will happen once once the actual game's released. Okay, now right off the bat, once we get in here, we're getting a call. So it's kind of like, I guess, like the first game, uh, Thief Simulator, where Vinny calls you right away once you start. So let's pick up this phone. Okay, listen up. You better do what I say, unless you want me leaking your stuff all over the internet. Move past the camera and find the flashlight. Should be in the garden somewhere. Wow, okay. So, leaking all of your stuff online, it kind of sounds like... kind of sounds like we're like a victim of some ransomware or something. And, and he's like... or it could be a she actually, is masking their voice. So, it's not like an actual... you know, we don't know who this person is, unlike the last one where it was Vinny and, and the Lombardis, but... So... Kind of this camera circle, it kind of looks like they did the same thing as they did in the original Thief Simulator where the camera's there and you can and you can see a circle around around where the the like the vision cone is, which is really good. I, I, I really liked that system in the first game and I'm happy they kept it in this one. So let's press C to crouch and make our way into here. Okay. So I wonder if... let me try... shift to run okay so it instead of the like in the old game you had to actually stand up from crouching to be able to sprint but in this game they just added a sprint directly from crouching I like that I like that they added that functionality good for all I know the guy is out of town so the house is yours to run just don't forget to take the big cardboard box and shove it into your car before you leave Big cardboard box, eh? This guy's out of town and just left a burger and soda just sitting here? Oh, whatever. So be it. Now I'm curious. I, I, oh, I'm so curious. Does the system work the same way where like you can hide in a trash can if you're running from the cops? Okay, so it does. Stop hiding. I see. I see. Okay. I mean... Honestly, a police officer or a tenant would be a fool if they couldn't see me. This, this guy's leaving this thing wide open, but... But whatever. That's still good, though. I, I liked that system, how you can hide in the trash can. Press F to turn on the flashlight and Z to switch, switch light modes. What does that mean? Oh, cool! So you can like make the flashlight lighter or darker. Now I wonder if tenants or police officers, like I wonder if you're more visible, like if one has less visibility than the other, or maybe they didn't add that, like, you know, maybe that's not like a, a thing, but that would be really cool. But I like that because it makes it easier to see or actually harder to see if you're looking at something super bright like that. I like this one better anyways. Anyways, let's look through here. Probably gonna be nothing in the cabinets. Yeah, nothing in the cabinets. But what's in here? Oh, all these, all these props. I don't, I don't know what's to steal and what's not to steal because I haven't played this game yet. Like you should be able to steal flash drives like that, but apparently not in this game. You could take calculators, and it's 0.1 kilograms. 0.1 kilograms. I'm gonna have a look at this. Okay. 
I like that. So they have the same UI, same user interface as they did in the, in the original Thief Simulator. Oh, okay. I really liked the UI in the in the Thief Simulator one. So I, I, I like the fact that they brought this in. I just feel so much nostalgia so far in this game. And 15 kilograms is the max I can carry right now. I think that's... I think that's what you started off as, or like what, I think that's the same as the first game. I think you just started off with 15, but I don't remember. But a 0.1 item, I wonder, that's two, 1.5. Okay, so I wonder if like some of the items are, like not all of the items are solid numbers, like two. Like in the first game, everything was, you know, one, two, three, four. There was just the USB flash drives and, and keys that were not full numbers. So I wonder if they are going to take more advantage of that. And, okay, so a toaster's three kilograms. Let's grab that. Take advantage of that system and, you know, have like half weights, not full kilos. Well, let's grab... I can't have my expectations high because it's the very first house, of course. Sure, we'll grab that. We'll grab that. Oh, a wine. Okay. The movement just feels so different in this game. It feels a lot more realistic, like you're actually moving, if you want to put it that way. Rather than the first game where it was kind of just like, I don't know, more like a Minecraft walk almost. It just didn't feel really natural. This feels a lot more like actually walking. I like that. Okay. Sure, we'll grab that. Sure, we'll grab that. There's the, the box. There's the mysterious box that he asked us to take. What's this? Note for couriers. I won't be back until the end of the year. Leave all packages inside the home and please lock the damn door. If you don't lock the door and I see something missing when I come back, I will find you, mate, and you will regret ever being born. Best regards, Justin. Hmm. Well, it didn't sound like Justin had the best regards when he was saying that, but... Okay, you can hide under beds in this game! Okay, I like that feature. I like that feature so far. Uh, that gives you more space to hide. Oh, the cash looks a lot more realistic than it did in the last game. I mean, realistic to an extent. The The animation for it looks beautiful. The fact that $15 is just one single $1 bill is not so realistic, but... Medication, I guess that's not something that we can steal. Let's grab the alarm clock. And let's grab this mysterious box that this mysterious man is demanding that we grab. Wait, never went through here. Oh, we want cash. Can you take those? I thought I saw like a little thing on it that you could. Oh, whatever. And, oh, I didn't actually notice that. Look at this. In the bottom right corner of the screen on the map, if I open something loudly, it kind of makes like a little, like a red thing, almost like you're making a lot of noise. Well, if I do one slowly, there's nothing. And it also does it when you're walking around. Well, if I crouch, it does nothing. That's really cool. So it actually has like a, a, a noise bar like a, and it has like a value, like it fills up a certain amount based on how much noise you're making, I presume. And let's try sprinting. Let's see if I can even sprint in here. Okay, yeah, so sprinting makes a lot more noise, so it actually lit up lighter. That's really cool. I like that. Uh, okay, so let's go out here. I don't want to get caught. Did I grab a key? Oh, I didn't even notice I grabbed a key. Okay, so there's actually a key to get into this house. That makes coming back here a lot easier. 
I mean, I'm not sure if I actually want to come back here because, you know, as you guys know from Thief Simulator the first, once you progress houses, coming back to these ones is not really worthwhile. But uh, I see a person, uh, there's a pedestrian right there. We certainly don't want to spark their interest in this one. Okay, let's get out. And let's not get caught on the way to the car. So you actually use the passenger seat in this game to start- oh, Of course you use the passenger seat. Look at this. There's nothing in the trunk. Like, there's no space. Okay, I didn't actually notice that. It was just, I guess, force of habit to, to go directly to the trunk. Good job. Almost like you've done this before. Well, you know what I know. Drive out of the area. I'll see you at your house. Almost like you've done this before. Why is he saying that? Is he implying that we are the same character as we were in the first game? If so, then that's 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 really cool. You know, honestly, I I really liked the story in the first game. So, I mean, I mean, you know, it's Thief Simulator, so there can't be much of a story per se, but there was a story, and I find that they did a really good job with it, and it, it really got, grabbed my interest and. As you guys can see, right now I'm already interested in what's going on. Like, you know, I'm, I'm so curious as to who this person is that we're talking to on the phone. And they make it sound like it's ransomware, but I can't really tell. And now he mentions it's almost like you've done this before. So is he implying that we are the same character as before? Let's have a look here. Okay, so same UI when you complete a mission. Although, okay, that might be different, because it's hard to see, but in the background here it shows a picture of a man. And that doesn't look like the same guy as the first game. I'm not sure though, but yeah, no, anyway, same UI as before, you have the thief rating experience and stealth, okay. Obviously I was joking about the I'll see you at your house thing. That'd be too easy for you, wouldn't it be? Get the box into your beautiful little house and open it up. Just be careful with it. Did he say I'll see you at your house? Before? I didn't actually notice that. Okay, so that yeah, that makes sense, of course. We're not going to actually see this guy because he doesn't want to be seen by us. Okay. I didn't actually notice I even said that, but let's bring this thing inside. Now, I wonder if I can open the door, interact with items while holding this box. No, it appears not. So let's put this box down. Go inside. I like that there's new music in this game. Well, perhaps not new, but like, different from the last game. I like that. What's that? Can I actually like... Well, there's a note there too, I'm curious as to what that is, but regardless, this. this can you actually control the music in this game? Okay. Open the cardboard box with a knife. Mini game. Mini game. What the heck does that mean? Okay. How do I how do I move this? Oh. Oh, okay, so it's it's hidden behind the box. But uh, you have to use the right, the right mouse click to rotate. Okay, I see. So we're actually physically cutting open the box in midair. What's this thing? Fly, fly by light drone. Oh, you know what? I actually, I think, I think I did see something like this in the in one of the trailers. Now I've been so excited for this game, and I've been. You know, looking into what's going to be in this game because I really enjoyed Thief Sim 1 and so I, I've been super hyped about this. And I think I did see something of a drone or something about a drone in one of the trailers. Okay, so what do we do? Pick up. Oh. How do I. 
Saves. Okay, that's that's the same as last game. It saves progress when you enter a location. Let's see. Okay, so here I can store something while I want to pick up that thing. Uh, I I mean I don't know what to put away. I'll just I guess I'll put everything away for now. Okay, there we go. I just know. Okay. Oh, that's unfortunate. So, this little storage unit here can only hold 99. That sucks because in the first game, I, I, I really like. I stored heaps of stuff in that thing. I think it was 999. It was really high, whatever it was. Or maybe, like, they have a system where you can upgrade this thing, or perhaps it just grows in space as you progress in the game. I don't know, but let's pick up this. Thing. I really like the props in this game. Okay, so these look like the training locks from the first game. But, like, this is not a training thing, this is a prop, and I, I think they did a really good job of paying attention to detail in terms of the props, because, I mean... I mean, none of these things are, like, necessary, but the fact that they even have them in there is really cool. Let's pick this thing up. I suppose it was a drone after all. I tracked the guy's courier deliveries and he ordered a fly-by light drone. I was right, yes? Keep it. It will help you in the process of making me rich. <laughs> Get your ass on the PC and I'll walk you through some stuff you need to know. Then, we talk business. Wow, okay. So I guess, uh, late warning, but there is profanity in this, in this video and in this game. Um... So let's see here, what's this? Press G to use the drone, to launch the drone. W, S, A, D to move around. Spacebar to fly up, left shift to fly down. Move the mouse to rotate. Be aware of the distance and battery. Okay. Tenants will call the police if they see the drone on their property. Okay. That's interesting. So I wonder if like, the human has a visibility level and the drone has a visibility level. Maybe, like, they don't see the drone as well as they see the human. But, uh... I don't know. We'll figure that out later on. But regardless, I'm gonna check this out. Okay, so... I think I understand how this works. You have to press it to turn it off, and then if you press it again, it, it skips... Like, it plays a different track. Okay, that's interesting. I like how you can actually control the music in this game. I didn't really like how the music was kind of random in the last game, and sometimes you'd hear the same song over and over and over again, and then occasionally you'd hear a different one, and sometimes you heard nothing and it was just like staticky. I really like how they can you can control the music in this game. What's this? Okay, let's have a look. Hey, I somehow managed to get your PC running after this disaster of yours. It was some kind of a Trojan. But my main point is, whatever websites you visit, reevaluate your life and never visit them again. I can't change the fact that your files were stolen, but at least your PC is safe now. I just had to boot it into safe mode and install an antivirus. That'll be $50 for my excellent service. M. Okay. So I was right. It is... It's... It's... Completely... It has to be that. It's... It's ransomware. Well, I'm 99% certain, I guess. It's ransomware, and... I guess this private number guy, this evil guy, I don't know, is like some sort of like a master hacker maybe? I, I don't really understand, but I, I, I'm assuming that that's what it is based on that note. What's this? I can't really tell. Heists are unavailable in the demo. Heists? Are there gonna be heists in this game? That's really cool. I, I wonder how they're gonna do that, is it gonna be like... Like these major like bank heists, or is it just gonna be like big name houses? I don't know. I'm really excited to figure what that that's gonna be because I mean I've been looking forward to it because of the new features in this game, but I didn't really have an idea of what was going to be in this game until now when I'm playing it for the first time. And heists, eh? I'm really excited. I mean, you guys can probably tell now. I'm really excited for the official release of this game. 
On Steel Gear, you can buy all sorts of equipment. Lockpicks, stethoscopes, and whatnot. For now, just get a crowbar. Steel Gear. I think that was called, uh... I think that was called, uh, Tools for Thieves. That's what it was. That's what it was called on, on, uh, the first Thief Sim. So there's, like, lockpicking tools, cameras, gloves. Dog meat. Are there gonna be dogs in this game? I wonder what that's for. And then there's other stuff. ATM hacking tool. Now that's really cool. And a baton. And does that mean they're gonna be physical fights in this game? A baton? Or what is that for? Maybe it's to knock stuff out. I don't really know. I'm kind of curious now as to what. Wow, okay. I'm just. I'm overwhelmed with how many new features there are in this game. I'm really liking it so far. Uh, okay, anyways, let's go buy that crowbar. Great. Now, go and rob tips. There's plenty of information you can buy there about houses you will rob. First four tips are free. Okay. But I mean, as you guys know, I, I was a huge fan of the first Thief Sim game. I, I played it a lot. I really liked it. I really kind of like mastered it, I guess you could say. That's how much I had just played it over and over and over again. So, you know, I was really excited for the release of this one. And I'm really happy for the opportunity to be able to play it. So let's look here. Uh, 102, Jackson's Shed. So, I guess the house is called Jackson's Shed? Yeah, it has to be. Okay. Okay. Check out Black Bay. You can sell items you stole through there. They sometimes offer much better prices than the pawn shop, so keep an eye out. Now, go on Hell Neighbor and accept the first job. Time to go back to 102 with a crowbar in hand and smash a few things. You'll have some fun and help me annoy the guy when he arrives back. So I guess this guy is like a victim of this evil guy that's on the phone with us as well? I don't really know. But, man, I really love the nostalgia. I think I have these things. I could sell it. But I really love the nostalgia of how Black Bay is in this game and how, like, you know, the, I guess, the tools for thieves and whatnot and everything else that was in this, in the original game is also in this game. I, I like, I'm really liking the nostalgia. Uh, I, I could have sworn I got these things from this guy's house, though. Ah, I certainly did. But regardless, I will try to, maybe, maybe it cannot be in the storage when I saw it on Blackberry. Maybe it actually has to be on my person. Um, okay, so this was like the rent-a-thug thing. And he wants us to, like he said, smash a few things and destroy the window. Sure, sure, we'll do both of those for you. Okay, as you guys can probably hear, that noise is the same noise as in the first game where you get a new mission. Uh, hold Q to open the selection menu. Or Use the mouse scroll wheel to change items. Oh, okay. So it's like the, the, the I guess the select thingy that they originally had, but there's a lot more slots in this one. Okay. And yeah, here, it's giving us the same tutorials we just had. That's cool, okay. You know, so far, I, I really like the things that... I like how this game is... I guess it's expanding on the first game rather than creating a whole new game because I love the nostalgia and I like how it's a lot different, at least so far. But also similar so far. Uh, oh yeah, I was gonna go in on Black Bay and try to sell those things, I forgot. Uh, frying pan, yeah. I knew I had these things. I'm not sure what it was giving me that nonsense for saying that I don't have it. Let's go on Black Bay again and just to see. Okay, so that's a lot of money. I wonder if it's like the fr I think in the first game, I think if I remember correctly, how Black Bay worked is everything was 
at a 100% increase from the pawn shop. So for example, if you stole something and it was worth 30 at the pawn shop, you could sell it for 60 on Black Bay. So I wonder if it works the same way? Or maybe it doesn't, because that's a pretty high price for a frying pan and a teapot, but... I don't know, we'll see later on. Okay, so do I have anything I don't need? I guess I don't need that if it's telling me that there are weakened boards on the back. So let's go here. And Madison Street. Madison? Yeah, Madison Street. What the heck? Oh, it's giving me a post-theft summary for, I guess, stealing the fly by light drone. Okay, that's interesting. Let's go have a look at 102. The driving is also, I'll note, the driving is a lot more smooth and more natural in this game than it was in the first game. In the first game, you know, you'd be driving, and for some reason, sometimes you get a turn, so you drive into a freaking tree. But this is a lot more smooth. Uh, it's past the time. Now, I know they said nobody's home, but I do want to go to a point where, you know, that people won't see me. So let's go to 2100 hours. Because at night, it's harder for people to see, anyways. Actually, I don't know if it makes a whole difference, because I don't want to be seen anyways, but regardless. We'll go with that. And, uh... 102, that's it, right? Okay, yeah, so just passing time. Do I have the notes in here like I did the last game? Oh, yes, I did. And this looks a lot more beautiful, too. Uh... Smash some things and destroy a window. Yeah, the broken fence that was mentioned. Okay. So let's just walk on right by. Nobody cares about the pedestrian because he will just mind his own business, right? And let's go to the back. Here it is. What the heck of kind of security is this? Do not enter. Jeez. I love the honor system in this. They 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 put a do not enter sign. Well, Jackson puts a do not enter sign, hoping you know that's a, like that's a that's completely an honor system. And I guess, well, we're simulating a thief, and we have no honor, so we will enter. There we go. Why did it just disappear? Let's smash a few things. Okay, so little diamonds disappear as you approach them, so keep that in mind. And this window is open. Is this one of the victims? I think I saw it, yeah. Yeah, even like the props here, like the toilet paper and the garbage and all this kind of stuff, it looks really nice. Oh, we already went through this house though, eh? But, you know, it doesn't hurt going through it again. I wonder if some of the stuff... In the first game, some things would respawn and some things would not respawn. And I guess that answers my question. This respawned. We took this the first game, we're taking it a second time. Or, sorry, the first run through, we're taking it a second time, so... I think it does work the same way where some things will respawn and some things will not respawn. Yeah, we'll grab that. We'll grab... Oh, the wine respawns! That's just unusual for me, because I think in the very first game, the wine was not a thing that respawned, so that just kind of threw me off. Grab that. Okay, so almost everything is respawning. I'm not going to complain about that, because it gives us more stuff, right? So... Cash. I can't remember, didn't I already go through that before? 
Or did I maybe just skip right by it? Oh, there's a wall clock. I didn't even notice. Anyways, let's go over here and do what they ask. Let's smash that. Uh oh. Time to put the drone to some use. I suggest going to 103 around 3 in the morning. They should be asleep by then. And it's close to the waking hours, so you might find out when they leave the house. Okay, let me finish this. I think it's at this one, right? Yeah. There we go. Perfect. So, this house is done. Dealt with. We are being this guy's B-word, and we are doing whatever he asks, and one of the things he asked was to piss this guy off by destroying a bunch of his stuff, and we've done so. So, I, from what I can tell so far, it's similar to the first, first Thief Simulator, at least. This time, clearly we're not a debt slave, but a victim of ransomware, or something like that. And we need to work for this guy in, I guess, because he's blackmailing us? While in the first game it was, uh, because, uh, yeah, you were a debt slave. So I'm quite curious as to how how they're going to do it with this story. To learn the tenant's habits, look at him directly and press the right mouse button. Look at him directly and press the right mouse button. Learned habits can be displayed in the inventory. The right mouse, right mouse button. I think it was the middle mouse button in the other game. That's that's going to be strange. Uh, anyways, 103, eh? And he wants us to go at 3 in the morning, so sure, we'll go at 3 in the morning. Is that... He's breathing, I think I heard that. Is it like a, a, a maximum sprint? Or is it just breathing just for, like, uh, for the purpose of... Explaining what was going on. Okay, so let's put all this stuff away. And let's keep the drone, of course. Why would we want to get rid of that? I think I have what I need, yep. Yeah. Oh wait, did I, did I put the crowbar away? Do I need that? Flashlight and crowbar, oops. Uh, that's, we might need that. And, oh yeah, he said three. So we'll go back in here and sleep until... Uh-oh, okay, so do note that you can't use the hotkeys that you could in the first game to plus and minus, or, pa or pass the time, it's just trying to hit DA and, and sleep and it's not working, so you'll have to actually click to do all these things. I like that electronic banger that was just on inside the car. Uh, Okay, which one's 103? Okay, so it's about 3 o'clock in the morning and... Uh, the drone. G default, it says on the top. I guess I'll go back here so I don't get seen by like pedestrians who are just nosy. Okay, there it is. So in the in the right hand side, you can see the battery, the max distance, and your current distance. Okay, so you can rotate the drone, but you can't actually. You can only rotate horizontally. You can't actually move it vertically. So I presume, yeah, I need to. I need to actually change the elevation of the drone just to be able to look up or down, which is kind of a nuisance, but so be it. Oh, here he is. Okay, so right here it's telling me to mouse, middle mouse click. What was the right click for? Could have just been bug. It's okay. So it's it, it is still middle mouse button to mark routines. I think that's all. Yeah, there's just one person from what I can see. If you haven't already, level up and learn a lock picking skill. Once you have that done, buy a basic lock picking tool on your PC. You'll need it to break into 103. Okay, so... Let's go here and... Okay, so I actually... The skill tree... I don't really understand. I'm thinking that perhaps because this is just the beta, the skill tree is not actually this 
bare, but rather we can only see this for the sake of the beta. And it looks similar to how it did in the other game. Uh, allows you to pick easy locks with basic lock, the basic lock picking tools. So let's go ahead and learn that. You could pickpocket people? To find out what they've got hiding in their jeans. Oh, so I guess if they're wearing sweatpants, you can't pickpocket them. Just joking, but uh, no, that's seriously, that's pretty cool. Uh, you can pickpocket people. I wonder if that means tenants? Because that's really risky. Or does it mean, like, pedestrians? And if it means pedestrians, and that's really cool how they actually... I guess you could say how pedestrians actually serve more of a purpose in this game than just simply walking around and getting nosy and looking into people's houses to see if there's a thief in there. Uh, I'm not going to keep looking at this, the rest of the, the skill tree, though, because that's going to certainly go too far, spoiling it for myself and for you guys, of course. I wonder if I can learn the rest of this guy's routines, though. Where is he? Shed. Huh. Okay, so there's a couple things I noticed about this UI so far already. And that is... Right here, it shows the... Red for the... When he's, I guess... At home doing stuff. Blue for when he's sleeping. And I guess green for when he's away. And that's a change. In the first game, it was red for when they're home and blue for when they're away. So now I guess it marks sleeping as a whole different thing, a category, I guess you could say, than just being at home and actually up and doing things, which I find is really good because in the last game, it just showed all red and, you know, they could be bedroom sleeping or they could be doing whatever and you would have no idea if they're sleeping or if they're just messing around. So I like how they actually separately categorized blue from red. But this is bizarre. 3 a.m. to 8 p.m. Now, the other game was quarters. You know, 6 a.m. to mid uh, to uh, noon, and then noon to 6. 6 to midnight, and midnight to 6. Like, that's how it was divided in fours and quarters. Now, this is five hours, so I wonder if... Maybe it's based on different routines? I don't, I don't really understand how this tenant routine thing works in this game. But perhaps I can wait until like 8 a.m. and figure out maybe the rest of this guy's routine? Uh, I don't know because I, I mean if he's probably gonna ask us to steal from this house and I don't really want to go steal from it if I have no idea what's gonna be back but whatever. We have to learn but regardless we're not doing 103 even yet so we're gonna go back home and learn lock picking or no we learned lock picking when we're actually gonna get a lock pick now hopefully it's not the same as that DIY lock pick that you'd break 5,000 of them up until you finally mastered the the tactic Dance with me. It's realistic even to the point where it shakes kind of because it's such an old car it shakes when you just boot it up okay be careful of this other vehicle here. And we will go... Uh, I guess we can go to the pawn shop. Everything unique is... Oh, wait a second. Dogs. So there are dogs in this game. And you know, now that it's mentioned, I think... I think I remember seeing something like that in the tutorial. Or not in the tutorial, sorry. In the, in the trailers. That's really cool. And I wonder if dogs have a tenant routine as well. That's There's just so much they can do with that and so much they can explore with that feature. I really like that they added that in. And I wonder what that dog meat does that we saw. Like, do can we give that to the dog to get it to shut up? Or do we, like, lure it? Oh, I don't remember. I, I remember seeing something about it in the trailer, but I just don't remember. But enough about dogs. You've leveled up. Okay, yes, I know that. And I was coming to the pawn shop because I had non-unique stuff. Except this pawn shop is just so nostalgic. It looks so similar to the other one. I really like it. Now hold up there, Sonny. Except apparently they fire the last guy. 
This guy's a completely different guy. Whoops. I don't actually have my things on me. Let's go in here and grab the stuff that we stole. Perfect. And let's sell it all to this dude. 25 for a teapot! It was like 8 before. I guess they really took inflation into account. Uh, wine. Not bad. 50 for a toaster? Not bad at all. And $5 for a calculator. Okay. And now let's head home now that we have a bit more cash to play around with. Back to the hideout. Okay, so now it's showing here a tutorial for the skill tree. And yeah, same same concept as before. You have to use EXP to unlock skills. Now let's go inside and see what the PC has to offer. Just can't get over that heist idea, that sounds so cool. Uh, okay, so basic... Oh my goodness, that looks like the DIY lockpick. I guess that's a headache pending, eh? Okay. Let's see what this guy has to say now. Try to pick a lock at your house before you go unlocking people's doors. Practice is the key. Literally. Look, man, you stole my information. You are the creator of a virus that ruined my life. I am not going to find any of your jokes funny. Uh, oh, this is this feels so much different, though. Okay. Use the mouse to position the rod, then hold D to rotate the lock. If the angle is correct, the lock will turn. An incorrect angle will cause the lock to get stuck. If it gets stuck, try to reposition the rod with the mouse until you find the right spot. So it doesn't mention anything of breaking so far, which is good, but, you know, it may not have to mention it for me to have to deal with it. Okay, so... What the heck was that? I need to try that again. Time to snatch another courier delivery. Go to 103 and steal a black package, then send it to me via black bag. I would advise breaking in when the house is empty. Okay, but there's no way I'm going to go risk my life with a DIY lockpick until I can figure out how this thing works. So like, it's... Okay, that's, that's, that's similar, very similar. Now he wants us to go to 103. That's the one we just inspected, right? With the... Uh, yeah, where he goes out at 7. I just, I'm so curious. When does he get back, though? That's the problem. Because if he goes at 7... And then come home, comes home at eight. That would not be the best time frame to go in there. Oh, so do you, I don't know if you guys see this on the on the loading thing right now, but rain actually comes like it plays a part in this game now. So if it's raining, it makes it more difficult for people to hear your footsteps. That's really cool. Just all the new features. I love it. I really love how they made this game. You know, such a good expansion, basically expansion on what they had originally. Uh, now, you know what? I'm... I don't think... Let's try 12. I don't think going in when we don't know when they're going to come out is the most wise idea. So... I don't know why I keep saying they either. I think it's just one person. I'm going to see if I can figure out when they get home. Okay, now it's unknown. And I can see the saving icon on the bottom, so it just saved now. Uh, now, my friend, are you home? Are you home? Are you home? Use. Okay, so you can use that thing to get into the house. Uh, kind of. You can use it to get into that gate which will get you into the house, but it'll also get you into the first house that we ever went to. So let me use the drone again. Let's try this thing again. And, you know, I noticed something before with the drone, so I want to try it this time. 
Let's look here. Okay, so... I think my suspicions are incorrect. We are not... I don't think we're playing as the same character as we did last game. Guy just looks so much more different. Regardless, let's go into the house and see if we can find anything. Are you in your bed, my friend? No, you are not. You are... nowhere? Oh, here you are. And let's mark you. Oh, crap, that's a tenant routine. Oh, okay, so that's a tenant routine from after. I just noticed it started beeping because I was losing signal. Okay, now this, I'm, I'm going to have to figure this out because that's... Well, I mean, you guys can already see the inadequacies of our, our schedule so far on this guy. So I'm going to have to go back and maybe... It's so hard to tell when these routines are... Like when they start and when they finish. So let's try sleeping until... I don't know, 11? Oh, I have to go through the whole day, that's right. Another thing I want to point out is I find they did a really good job with the sound in this game. You guys will notice that once you pick this one up too, because... The, just the sound of the rain and the sound of the thunder, it just sounds... Like, it's it's pretty accurate. It sounds really good. Now let's go back over to this dude's house. And let's see if he's home this time, because I need a tenant routine for this very short time frame, and we need to go fast to get it, so... We got until noon, let's go. Alright, buddy, where are you? Are you there? Yes, you are. Perfect. Uh-oh. He sees me. Wait, what the heck was that? Oh my goodness, I only got one hour of tenant routine. I think I understand now. I really think I understand now. So from what I'm getting now, and this could be right, could be wrong, but I'm confident in its correctness. I think how it works is when you mark a tenant routine, it also gives you a bunch of hours following that hour that you marked it in. So because I did it to 12, it gave me the next 5. Because I did it in the 3 o'clock range, it gave me till 8. Okay. So because I only marked the at 11, it, it didn't give me anything in the future because I already had the things in the future. You know, this makes more sense. I'm... I understand now how this works. I think I understand now how this works. So this is a nuisance to drive... Or sorry, to keep running all the way back and forth from the car, but... I think how... I th okay. I don't know if I can mark it at... When does he leave? At... Six, uh, we'll go at 6, but... I think if I mark it at 6, will I get until 11? Or can I not mark now that I've already, you know, marked something in that time frame? Let's try that. Let's see if that works. Perfect, so we're here again and we're going to give it a shot. We're going to try to mark him while we already know where he is. Just to see... Oh, shoot. I keep forgetting about the tenant routines, because they can... Not the tenant routines. The... Pedestrians. Because they can see if we're trespassing. Okay, so how do I get... I guess... I suppose I can go this way. I just... I have to be careful with those... Those bloody pedestrians, because... They'll notice me right away. Uh-oh. That makes things a bit more difficult. Can't mark them through here, I don't think. Ah, uh, what a pain. Okay, so I'm gonna drop this. And I think I'm actually just gonna wait for him now to leave the house. And perhaps I can just physically mark him. Uh-oh. I left my drone inside. I, ooh, ooh, I stopped using the drone when I was... Oh, that's not good. I stopped using the drone when I was still inside the yard, so it's sitting in there. Well, if he catches the drone, that's... 
not good. I wonder if they actually put that functionality into this game. But regardless, I'll hide in the trash can or something if he if he detects the drone. Beautiful. So I think that's exactly what it does. He's on his way out now. I think that's exactly what it does. So it doesn't actually detect the drone. It just detects... Uh oh Gotta get out of there. The car coming. It doesn't detect the drone. It just... You know, he just walks right by it. Let's figure this out. Perfect. So let's grab that. We certainly don't want to lose that. And now I have a bit of time. I have until 10 a.m. to... You know, take everything from this guy. Oh, that's another lockpick, another nuisance. There we go. That's, you know, not as hard as the first game, to be fair. Not as hard as the first game. What the heck is this thing? I presume that's to turn off the camera? Does that mean there's a camera in here? I really wonder why I even had to do that. Or maybe I didn't have to do that. And I was just doing it anyways because it was there. I don't know. Sure, we'll grab that. I'm sure, we'll grab that. You can hide in a bathtub too? Not bad for hiding spots. Not bad. Let's grab his cash. Why not? I don't see anything else in the bathroom. Uh, projector? Sure, we'll grab that. That sounds expensive. Uh-oh, we can't get in there. Okay. So do keep that in mind. You can't get into that second place. You'll have to come back for it later. Take good care of the stuff I sent you, bro. Took me ages to find it at a good price, but please, don't let your neighbors smell the stuff, man. Cops are all over the place. Let me know when you we can hang out, champ. T. Is he implying marijuana? There's a black package. We got it. It sounds like he's implying marijuana, but I can't tell. Key to 103. Not bad. So now we have a key for this house, too. Okay, this is looking good so far. Is this guy like a math teacher or something? Does he smoke joints while teaching a class? Let's see. I, I... Ah, I can't get out of the window from the inside? That's unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. Alright, what do you got? I'm stealing all your beer. No, there's no beer. Or, I can't take his olive oil either. Sure, I'll grab his knives though. And this guy is getting home, eh, not for a while, so we're good. Don't see anything else I could take. Oh, wine, not bad. Oh, I didn't check these either. Uh-oh, okay, gotta come back. This guy's not done being a victim, I need to come back and get his blender. And his candle. So we don't need to go slow, we could just go fast. I don't see like a TV or anything cool that I could steal like that, but regardless. Leave mud here. Well, I didn't even bother, I just walked right in. Okay. Well, I think that settles it for this house then. I'm sure we could just leave completely unnoticed and we'll be fine. Rains quite a lot in this game though, so far. And we're saying it to him on Blackbird, too. My driving certainly needs work, but... You know, that wasn't too bad, especially for the second house. You know, we have a good time frame where we could just go in and grab a bunch of stuff, and that wasn't bad for a, for a second house. I mean... 
from what I can tell at least, I don't really know how everything is in terms of expense relative to other things, but I, I don't know, I, I think it seemed good. Uh, let's worry about the leveling up stuff later, and let's just send the thing on Black Bay now. I still really want- I think that's the, one of the things I'm most excited for. I still really want to know what this heist thing is. And let's go to Black Bay. Ah, uh, yes, a blender. Very important. I need to go get that blender. And I have the headphones too, so I just need a pen drive now. So I guess I couldn't steal that green one that we saw in the very first house, but the blue one's one you can steal, I guess? And let's send the black package. He's not paying us for it, apparently. Learn to pickpocket. Time to dig a bit deeper into people's belongings. Okay, and that's that feature I was so excited for to figure out what this pickpocketing thing is. So we are going to learn pickpocketing on the next episode because we've been going on this one for a while, but. You know, it's it's not hard to get carried away. I'm really enjoying this one so far. I'm hoping you guys are enjoying this first look at gameplay in this game. And I'm really excited for the release of this game. And I'll certainly, just like the last game, I'll certainly be making tutorials on each individual house in this game as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed making this one. And I certainly enjoyed the preview of this game. And I will see you on the next one. Cheers.